within society there are wicked people and it is right and proper that they are locked away for the protection of society. If I was a Christian, for me, prison was just a place you went, you got caught for something, you had food, you'd have a cigarette, and you just talk with everybody about everybody else about all the things you were going to do when you got out. And it was like going to college to learn about crime for me, to be honest. It was a very hard place. Very, very tough. The rejection and uh, the lack of self-worth was immense. Prisoners, when they leave prison, do have a terrible time about re-entering society. I mean, I feel very sorry for them. It's almost as if they are modern-day pariahs. And, and it's almost as if they've got a big arrow over their head saying, this man was in prison. Jesus Christ went to the cross for that man. He took all the sins. You see, if that's me and that's God, that's all the things I've done wrong. If that's Jesus and that's God, when he went to the cross, he took all the wrong things I've ever done upon himself to give me free access to God. And it's exactly the same for all prisoners. There is no sin that Jesus Christ cannot forgive. And I know this is going to upset an awful lot of people, even the sin of rape and murder, as long as the person is sorry. And I'm not talking now about a glib, oh, sorry, folks. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a deep repentance because the original meaning of the word repentance means to turn 180 degrees, which means if you're facing that way, you then turn that way and you come to turn your back on all that's gone before. It's very easy to see the same person coming through custody, through the cells, time after time after time, and thinking that they were lost cause. I have to remind myself that that person belongs to Jesus and Jesus is seeking to bring them back to him. And that is the sin within the person and not the person themselves that you know I should be seeking to help. So I should be loving the person and hating their sin. And I need to remind myself that every time I see that same person who's been beating his wife up again Friday and again Saturday, and he's back in custody on the Monday, and to remind myself that, you know, that person does have a chance to turn his life around. At the heart of the Christian faith is the idea of forgiveness, in that we have all fallen short of what God requires of us, and that uh, we depend on his forgiveness, and his forgiveness was um, made available to us at a huge price, namely in the death of Christ. I think the good news about the Christian faith is that God is a forgiving God. God understands how difficult it is to get things right because God in the form of Jesus walked around on life. He knew what it's like to be oppressed. He knew what it was like to be with crowds shouting at him. He knew what it's like to be verbally abused. He knew all the pressures and the stresses that we, we know in life ourselves. He understands how it feels. He understands how easy it is to get wrong. Forgiveness very much lies in the hands of the person who has been wronged. When we sin, we wrong God. Forgiveness belongs to him and to no one else. When someone wrongs me, forgiveness belongs to me. It does not belong to the judge who's dealing with the case. The law has judgment and mercy. And of course, these are very, very strong biblical principles. If you, if you belong to the Hangham and Flogham Brigade and you lock them up and chuck away the key and you're not looking after them, then, to be honest, you are abusing your power 